Next is to recreate a web page. And I'm going to do this by looking at the page. Besides recognizing the columns, here's a two column layout. I'm looking at this maybe as a seven by five columns, which will be 12 columns total. This is one row where this first column has this big hero component of an image, title text, and a little captioning under here with an author. And then on the right, this other column takes up five spaces in the column system, have these little sidebars. Now look for the pattern. In the sidebars, each one begins with this subject, followed by a title, and floating to the right is an image. Underneath is a horizontal rule. And we can ignore that for now. But this is the pattern, component, 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 and all these I'm going to call sidebar components. And here's a hero component of an image, title, text, author. This is what I have so far. I want to make sure it can repeat. Let's take a closer look at this and how it was created. First, I'm constraining my component to a certain number of pixels. Otherwise, the page would just stretch on forever, which is good. We want our components to be flexible. So I set a width, not a max width, to 1,000 pixels. If I set a max width to 1,000 pixels and the width to 100%, we can then see the responsiveness of this component. I'll have to center the text with this one. In general, this is what I'm looking for. How do I construct this? Let me deconstruct to show how I construct it. Let me focus in on the sidebar one first. That's an interesting one. I just put a name sidebar up here just to refer to it. That's not necessary. I created this div to a slash div. And with, within there, there's an image, some section text, and that section text, this is why I consider a section text, followed by this blurb to read. Section text, followed by a blurb to read. I'm gonna look at the image style and also the class for a section. I made a new linked style sheet called layout.css. And that's where I'm composing all my layout components. Here's the sidebar one. Class is sidebar. That's this whole div to div, this whole component. I'll put a border around it just to make it a little easier to see. Border, one pixel, solid. There's the component. Within the sidebar is the definition of section. And that will be red text. I transformed the text to always be uppercase and the font bold. Looking at the website, all that section text looks like it's uppercase. This way, if someone types a lowercase, it will be forced to be uppercase using text transform uppercase. The sidebar image, I declared it to float to the right side. Without it, let me just remove that. This is the sidebar image, sidebar, and then I'm defining the element of image within sidebar to float right with it removed. It all squishes up on the left side, adding it back. Everything flows together again. I want the components to be able to repeat and you're gonna see a problem. I'm gonna remove this temporarily, overflow auto. I'll just comment it out. Okay, I'm looking to repeat this component. And the reason why on this page, here's a sidebar, 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 sidebar. Not only does the component have to take its form, it has to be repeatable. And you would think, oh yeah, that's easy. Let me just copy this whole sidebar to sidebar. And I'll just paste, 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 paste as many as I want. I only need four. This is a demo. When I press refresh, look what will happen with the float image. Eek. Why? Ew. Well, float right or float left, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to. The floats will hang out on a particular side and go across multiple block elements like divs or paragraphs. But I don't want that to happen in this case. I want each component to take the full height from the image.
One way would be just to define the sidebar's height as always being, let's say, 500 pixels, no matter what. When I hit refresh, we, we got it, but it's not very responsive, too much space. So then I have to go back and forth to figure out what exactly is this height. And if I want this to be a responsive component, this isn't a good solution. So get rid of the sidebar height being 500 pixels. By using overflow auto, overflow auto, that will fix the height of each component to fit this floating image. And just like that, we have this component that knows how to deal with this floated image, giving enough space, but is still responsive. That's what we're looking for in a component. This next component, let's take a look at that one. The hero section. I call this div to slash div the hero content. Let me, in my CSS, define it as hero image by putting a comment there. And in my CSS, I'll define this as my sidebar component. This way in the CSS, it's a little cleaner to read. The hero text headline will be bold, font of a particular size. And on the original page, all this is centered. Let me center that now by going to the hero content, which is the outside div from div to slash div. I want all this content to be centered. Going to the hero content, text align center, which will center the image and the text within that container. And if I didn't have this, the width of the image to be 100%, dot image full, which is assigned to the image class. Another way I could, could have done it was hero content image. Maybe I'll do that right now. Wherever there's hero content, wherever there's dot hero content, set the image element to something. Right now, I'm leaving it blank, and I'll fix that in a second. Without setting it to 100%, the image is smaller than the component. On this page, if this is the column, as that column collapses, see that the image is always the full width of the column as it collapses or expands. So the rule for this hero content image, hero content, Go find the image in there. Set its width to 100%. Once you have a page of components, then you can start filling out your grid with these component structures. By keeping the layout.css separate, this final grid layout would have the grid style sheet for defining rows and columns. And also this layout style sheet that is component specific. This way, the underlying structure of rows and columns is separated from the layout, our component layer. Being separate, the update of components, the look and styling of them, and the addition of components from the updating of the underlying structure that holds the site's layout together.